Welcome back, Akron fans, to these exhibition matches I'm just doing today. And this match is going to be on Twilight of the Elders between Nail and Ferreter. So Nail's in the bottom left corner of the map. He is playing Vekir, while Ferreter in the top right corner of the map is playing Grekim. And in case you didn't watch the Christmas tournament cast, Ferreter was the silver medalist. So second place winner of the Akron Christmas tournament. While Nail, on the other hand, unfortunately had to forfeit at the start, though Nail is a very strong player, so it would have been quite interesting to see what would have happened if he had stayed in. Given the results, it probably would have been Nail, then Karn Aberrant, then Ferreter, but we'll never know. So, perhaps another tournament later on, we'll see more Vicarin and God and Nail and... Karn Aberrant and Ferreter, who have clearly proven themselves as good players. But for now, we have this match. And Nail is... Well, Nail apparently has been playing random recently, although I haven't seen him play Vecure much. Mostly I've seen him play CISO and Grekum, so I'm curious how that'll work out. And Ferreter, of course, playing Grekum, which is his main race, as we saw before. And he knows how to handle Grekum, so this should be very interesting. Something of a tournament match without the tournament, I suppose. And an Octo coming down from Ferreter while a Shin and Tethbeer go up from Nail, exploring each other's base, just basic scouting. Neither player looks like they're going for particularly aggressive tactics right now. Ferreter not taking the bottom of the map, going for a walk or anything like that with his triad, or his duo. And this Octo will likely be echoed out once it does its job of scouting. And then be, well, it should say not echoed out, but should be turned into an RP once it's done its job of scouting. While Nail is very quickly building up a foundation for a depot. It's about... Two minutes into the game, he has no QPRP, so I'm not sure if that foundation is actually meant to be a depot, or if he's just going to be jumping his resource processors over to the QP when he gets the chance. Because you do need that Q plasma. You can't just go without Q plasma in order to build vehicles, because all the Q plasma you start with needs to be used to build that depot. And Farad, on the other hand, is... Now he's building up more RP Octos. His Octo that he sent out is still going out. He has not changed that plan at all. But yeah, so normally I found Grecan players will tend to, on this map, go towards the East and the South expansion, just walk their triad over to it. Not usually the Northwest expansion, mind you. It's a large target, but it's also... I mean, it's a large... I should say, it is a large expansion, but it's also a large target as a result. Because that's the entire point. I mean... I have seen players go towards this, usually Vecchio or CISO, but Grekim tends to just walk along the southeast side of the map, grabbing the resources that they can there. However, Ferreter is staying inside his main base, which does have quite a few resources already, so it's not like he's missing out on too much at the moment. And so is Nail. Nail building up his depot. He has an RP on Q Plasma, and he will have enough resources for a Zion Pulsar. With Ferreter's Octo, I'm not sure if that's able to see. I don't think he's able to see what's going on in Nail's base quite yet. And no, actually, it's barely able to see the depot from the looks of it. Yes, it would be barely able to see the depot. And able to see that... Well, not sure if it can see this RP. That's one thing. I really don't know if it can actually see that far. It's at the very edge of its vision. But it doesn't matter because it is going down, hitting the scouting units right near the foundation. So it will be going down, unlike the center of the map, where the scouting units have been echoed away from. The Tethyr and Shinbir, that is. So Ferret are still down in the past... He is... Well, he's moving his Octo. Changing his Octo's trajectory. Looks like it was towards the south of the map. Probably towards this expansion to make sure that Nail doesn't see what's going on there. Or, sorry, say... So that Ferreter sees what's going on there so Nail can't hide anything from him. Though, the Octo would still be useful to getting rid of any of Nail's forces that they might send to Scout, unless they're the Zion Pulsar in question that likely is coming up soon. That being said, the Foundation seems to be more what he's going for. Anyway, the initial Octopod coming up, right, I forgot to mention this, most of the time, Grecan players nowadays will build an early Octopod in case of early Zion Pulsar or early ATHC, it's very useful, or early Octopod from a fellow Grecan player, it's very useful as early defense. So it's something that you see many Grecan players will build, they'll take their RP on QP, you have a couple, have one or two cycles of harvesting, you only need one though, and then build an Octopod from that, using that to defend while they build up everything else. And Nail continuing to try to fend off this Octo coming in from different angles, not really doing any good as a result. So Ferreter, yes, he did go towards the south to try to attack from that direction, but 
No, I don't see much point. I really do think you should probably go over to the south expansion here and just stake it out. Because that Octo isn't going to be able to do any meaningful damage with the Foundation nearby, unless he's waiting for it to come to... I mean, if it comes to Depot, if he waits for that, which is now, then yes, that could work. Because then the Foundation wouldn't be healing up. But however, this Zion Veer is going to be right in range. And even though the Teth and Shinbeer can't stand up the Octo, the Zion Veer, if it, especially if it's not being attacked directly, will certainly be able to. With the second Zion Veer coming, that's not going to be at all useful for that Octo. The Octo is dead, basically. The Octo cannot attack directly. And here comes the Seppi for... Wait. Well, the Seppi's transforming into the Reef. The Octopod that was built is no longer being built. Ferritor, quite confident that he's not going to be attacked early on, seeing as the Depot basically didn't get up ultimately until about the 4-minute mark. He's got a point. However, he still will need to have some defenses. I mean, you can't just go off completely defenseless, even though Four minutes in is a fairly late depot. Like it's mid-game economy strategy, basically. He still will need to make sure that he's in a fairly good defensive position, because right now he has no units. Design Pulsar coming back here at the Unplayable Past Edge would kill him. He has nothing to defend right now. Nail doesn't seem to be going for that right now, but we won't know for another real-time minute or so what's going to happen. So... So, it's going to be a... Sorry, I'm getting distracted by Nail in the chat right now insulting the French. Which is rather distracting and annoying. Seeing as I am French. Well, French-Canadian. But I digress. Reef coming in from Ferreter. So Ferreter will be just getting another Seppi up to rebuild that triad, give himself a full triad. Advanced structures from there getting probably this far out into Aspire and then getting air units from there. So I expect air, air units from Ferritor within about two minutes. Like by the six minute mark, he should have them. And the depot is up. Nail has not started building. Oh, Nail mentioning that he is in fact complaining about the language of French, not the people of French. Well, the French people, I should say. <laughs> that was a terrible way of phrasing it. Zion Pulsar, however, at the quarter to five mark. And that will be... That'll be fine, actually. It looks like two two reefs are coming up. A third reef is going to be coming up soon for Ferritor. So even without defenses, the Zion Pulsar is going to be hard-pressed to deal any meaningful damage with all these reefs healing up. A nice bubble wrap here. Though only, some of these RPs are only healed by one reef, which means that they will be vulnerable. That being said, they're vulnerable already. I mean, they're kind of in the background. And here, Octo at the 536 mark. And is this when the Zion Pulsar is up? Zion Pulsar is up, so Nail could teleport in which he's planning on doing exactly, but at this point, the Octopod has been built. So, Nail cannot deal any meaningful damage. Ferritor is in a perfect defensive position. So, Nail will probably want to simply stake out some expansions, maybe get Aerial Control Center and build some Aerians from there. This will be... Well, interesting. Ferritor still has the back of... of... Well, he has an Octo on the back of Nail's base, staking it out, which... Doesn't seem to be doing much yet, but I'm thinking he's probably going to be trying to do it when Nail's distracted doing an attack. Send this Octo up and start dealing with the RPs. However, Nail should at this point go for an expansion, either the northwest corner of the map or the south side of the map. And it looks like he is going for the south side of the, well, southeast corner of the map, likely to set up a small defensive base for his expansions. While continuing to build up RPs in his main base, there's this is the other Zion Beer that was built, so. Zion Pulsar teleporting into Ferritor's base. Ferritor's Octopod nowhere to be found. Now here, there are two Octopods. Why am I thinking he's nowhere to be found? It's just in the back. Just, I'm, I'm blind. This, this, this is an Octopod. It's right here. We're all good. However, it is in the back, which means that Zion Pulsar could get lucky when it comes in. But no, it is going right into the middle of the Octopod patrol path. The Octopod should intercept it. And no, the Octopod apparently is not going to spot it in time. However, Ferritor will likely be moving those Octopods into position to deal with the Zion Pulsar as it attacks the Reef, which, by the way, is only being healed by one other Reef. The Bubble Wrap is not complete. The main, I mean, the main assets are being healed up by all three, but the Reefs are not being healed up by each other completely, which is one of the big secrets of the Bubble Wrap. However, it doesn't seem to be causing much harm to Ferritor, as he is able to handily dispatch this Zion Pulsar. His Octo, however, not going for an attack in the back without being noticed. This would actually be a great timing for it, by the way. Ferret, if he had gone, if he goes for an attack right now, sends his Octo up to deal damage. I'm not sure if he's forgotten about it completely. 
But if he hasn't, sends up, deals some damage, it's going to be a great timing for it. Nail cannot deal with it right now. Nothing in his main base exists to deal with this. Zion Pulsar, however, has been moved away. So no... No units lost, ultimately. No real damage dealt, but he Nail did get a lot of information about Farader's main base, and Farader has not gotten any information about Nail's base. And Nail... Let's see, the Shinvir over in the southeast corner of the map likely to be setting up a foundation for an expansion fairly soon. So from there I anticipate that we'll see an expansion towards the south side and possibly the east side. This Zion Pulsar is keeping watch on the east side expansion. No, it's teleporting away towards the northwest, double checking that Ferreter has not set anything up there. And no, Ferreter has not. And it looks like this Tethvir was... Uh, the Tethvir the Zion Turcher was completely unintended. Probably the Zion Turcher, as much as I hate to say it, because Zion Turchers at this stage in the game aren't as useful as a Teth Turcher would be. Seeing as Teth Turchers, well, Teth Turchers are the anti-air unit for Gra for Vekir up until Housing Class, and even then, they are the only flying anti-air unit that, well, dedicated anti-air unit that Vekir has. And being that Grekim is very fond of its air units, do not surprise me. And a Teth Veer hanging out, also staking out the base, so both players are set up with one unit, just in case to send it in and scout out a bit. Faropod coming in from Farida, however, this is really important though. This Faropod is going to be taking care of the Zion Pulsar down here. However, Nail will be able to run away from that. Nail, the Zion Pulsar, I think is actually already teleported away. So ultimately, yes it has. So ultimately the Faropod will find nothing. However, he knows that the Zion Pulsar did survive. So Farida aware of that much. And also aware of the Annex, the southeast corner of the map that Nail has set up for an expansion. Farpod trying to deal with it. Nail will... Not sure what he's going to try to do to fix this. Maybe build a Teth Veer there. Let's get up some Teth Turchers. He has some Shin Turchers building up, but he really could use Teth Turchers. Though Shin Turchers do finding us Farpods. It's the Sepi Pods that are the problem, which will be coming soon. No doubt. Although, a second Far... Yeah, second Farpod being built up, which means... That was not a Sepi Pod I saw when I... Before I jumped away. No, that's another Farpod. So... Ferreter not building Sepi Pods, not concerned about anti-air units coming up, and at this point, rightfully so, Ferreter not actually dealing with any air units from Nail, and although he doesn't have a lot of information about Nail's main base, and Nail has a lot of money in the bank, by the way, I think he might be saving up for Gate Tech, but he is aware of what Nail is up to, somewhat, at least with the expansions, it's just that, really at this point he has no air threats, the Fire Pods will be able to take care of the Zion Pulsers without issue, it's just... A tech switch to Teth Turtles is going to be very easy. Granted, so is this tech switch to Sepi Pods. It's just that... Now, Shin Turtles, however, I should point out, are cloak detectors. And against Fire Pods, that is invaluable, being that Fire Pods are the only cloaking bombers in the game. I mean, they're not the only cloaking air unit. Blackbirds can also cloak. But given how prolific Fire Pods are, you really want to have a cloak detector that can get around and fly, like Tornado or Shin Turtle or a Sepi Pod. And... That would probably be why Nail went for that first, rather than a Teth Turcher. However, he still doesn't have money in the bank for two Teth Turchers, but he is getting Gate Tech! That is exactly what he was saving up for. I'm... I'll, I'm very surprised. I'm actually a little bit worried for Nail's sake, because right now, Ferreter has a very complete base. He has a lot of units just patrolling his base, so getting in is going to be very difficult. Sepi Pods are coming up. More Sepi Pods as well. So the Shin Turcher, its days are numbered, wherever it is. Here it is. Its days are numbered. And... Ferreter basically has this northwest expansion all to himself. He has two Farpods patrol, keeping watch, and he has a nice little duo set up. A secondary duo, by the way. His main duo is still in his main base. So a secondary duo just spitting out RPs, while Nail has Gate Tech being built up, which means he will be able to teleport no problem, and can set up... Like, all of his units will have skip teleport. Well, they do now. And he can set up a slip gate, though he doesn't have the money for it. And, of course, can chronoport using the slip gate. However, two Farbods are still, and they're too much for a single Shin Turcher to deal with. But it's able to deal with it and run away, apparently only fighting one of the Farbods. However, Ferger likely to get this one Farbod here over to fight off the Shin Turcher and deal even more damage. Getting rid of it, since it's the unplayable past Edge, Nail will have very little chance to save that. However, at this point, Nail has run away. A minute ahead of Ferger, so it's still unreliable. Still not sure whether that will work out. But no slipgate up thus far. Nail does have the money for it. it. Looks like he is worried more about building an expansion to the south side of the map, having been able to set that up since the Farapods ran away. Didn't bother to actually deal with it. But Ferreter's main base is very well patrolled right now. 
Farbot's coming back after defending the expansion attack, and it looks like more Farbots have been built as well. But the Farbots from the main base have been moved from the looks of it. Nefera are having moved them back and added more Farbots, or to save the Farbot that was killed. It looks like he probably added more. I think the Farbot that was killed was killed in the unplayable pass right here. So Ferritor is going to have no problem getting rid of the Shin Turcher, but it looks like... Well, he's pausing. Not sure if there was supposed to be a slipgate here or what, because that Shin Turcher was not in position to Chronoport, and there was no slipgate to Chronoport with. Like I said, I'm a little bit surprised Gate Tech has been researched without a slipgate, because the slipgate... I mean, using it for getting skip teleport is kind of handy. It saves a bit of time in construction. But it's it's given the cost of gate tech, you really do want to build a slip gate. That's having chronoporting is huge, and one of the big reasons for the cost of gate tech being so high is because of chronoporting. If you only use it for skip teleport, it's not really worth it unless you're building about a dozen or so units and getting skip teleport on all of them. And since Vecchio rarely builds more than six or seven vehicles in a game, unless it gets really into late game, it's unlikely to be a big concern. You're never really going to see that many vehicles that it's worth getting Gate Tech just for Skip Teleport. You really want to get it for Chronoporting and Slipgate Teleporting and getting across the map using that. But mostly Chronoporting. And this Farbot getting rid of the Comm Hub, which really wasn't doing too much. His position wasn't great for spotting what Ferritor was up to. So really all it's doing is letting Nail know where one of the Farbots is at a certain point in time on a certain time wave. But this base having a nice little bubble wrap as well... Zion Pulse is doing what it can to slow it down, but really that's all it's doing. It's not dealing any meaningful damage to it. Well, Ferritor looks like he's saving up for, game, for current reporting as well. And one thing I mean, it might be that Nail was thinking in terms of Grekin, but honestly I think he just wants to use for skip teleport, which, like I said, there's a bit of time saved, but he hasn't built enough units to make that time savings worth it. And he hasn't used any of his units in such clutch setups that, at least as far as I could tell, that it's made a difference. So, as best as can be discerned, Nail's kind of wasted his money at this point. But I imagine Slipgate will be coming soon. I would be surprised if Nail did not build a Slipgate later on in this game. Ferritor, on the other hand, getting Chronoporting at the 14 minute mark. And of course, being Grekin, he can Chronoport wherever, whenever, without any gates required. So this is not going to be an issue for him. He will be able to do whatever he wants. This auction might even just tell Chronoport back and deal a ton of damage to the RPs, undermining Nail completely. Though Nail has enough money in the bank, it probably won't be a huge deal. Still, if he manages to get in right now, if he jumps back three minutes from here with his Octo, it would actually be able to deal a fair amount of damage. So Ferritor, Chronoporting has completed for him at the 1544 mark, which is when he is focused, and I do not see any Chronoported units over these Farpods are likely candidates, as are the Semipods, however... They are not doing so. Neither player has actually chronoported anything yet. And there's that Slipgate. There we go. Nail has built a Slipgate, keeping one foundation up for healing, and Slipgate will be coming up in a couple of minutes. Just double-checking the unplayable past, probably targeting one of his chronoports, figuring out when he should send his units back to. Getting a Zion Halcyon, I do not see specials having been researched three minutes ago, so I have 12-minute mark or so. So I, I imagine that Zion Halcyon is intended purely for damage, which it does well. It does a lot of damage. It's also able to just take a lot of punishment. 600 health is quite a lot compared to Zion Church at 300 and Zion Pulsar at 190. So Zion Halcyons are great tanks. And here, okay, here's the foundation turning into Slipgate, not building a second foundation ultimately for that Slipgate. And Ferritor having Chronoported back, how did I miss this? Having Chronoported back his Pharopods, both Pharopods to this expansion to undermine Nail, right where I had expected them to be, but I I thought Ferritor had almost forgotten about this. So yes, Chronoport's first Chronoport happened 16 minute mark in the game to about 13 minute mark, 13, 24 mark or so. That is going to be very powerful. So this base is going to be destroyed. Nail does not have this base on the green time wave. It's it's gone. These far pots have taken care of it completely. So Nail likely will have enough money to have this. And yes, Nail actually Chronoporting back some, Chronoporting back his detector and Teth Halcyon. However, not nearly enough. Setting pods are going to be able to still take care of what is there. However, being destroyed themselves will be a bit of a setback. Not enough, though. This base is still gone. The green time wave has removed it, but Nail, regardless, has not been undermined. He did a really good job keeping enough units or keeping enough resources in the bank to knock and undermine, which 
is why I was a little bit reluctant to comment on the resources in the bank, because like I said, he was saving for gate tech, but also once both players have gate tech, then you get the undermining strategies, which we haven't seen a lot of for a long time, mostly because for a long time players were getting like, hyper expansion was so huge that you basically couldn't undermine anyone because they had a thousand or so resources in the bank at any given time, even if they didn't want to. And then the later, this, this latest version, or the last couple versions, chronoporting was so expensive, it just so happens in this particular map, from the looks of it, both players managed to get enough resources to make it work. Which is very surprising too, given that this map's had its resources halved since basically the time of hyper expansion. It was originally designed to try to counter that by keeping expansions far enough away and keeping the main base, setting it up so that both Fekir and Grekin could one base it, while CISO they expand across the map. But even with this setup, it's still enough. And with two slipgates as well, Nail really prepped for entering this Chrono War. Ferritor, on the other hand, not Chrono putting back anything since the base assault. However, this base assault, like I said, was very successful. Only missing the Annex, which could be pivotal later on. However, Ferritor still ahead in expansions and getting weapons as well. I expect a Chrono Bomb will be coming up soon. Farley as well, and here's that Octo! There we go, that Octo sending back in time to assault the unplayable past. That is... That is going to be pretty big. And Nail actually pointing out only needing one slipgate per base in the chat. And I would agree with you except for the fact that if you're doing a lot of repeated small chronoports, having two, two slipgates allows you to chronoport with one of the slipgates while the other slipgate is being used up. Or, alternately, you can chronoport with one of the slipgates and the other slipgate can still teleport units because slipgates can't, as far as I recall, teleport or chronoport when they're recharging or repel from the looks of it. So, when it's recharging, a slipgate is pretty much totally useless. This means that having two slipgates still allows for the repel defense and allows for teleportation with the slipgates, while chronoportation has happened recently. But here's that Octo I mentioned, dealing a lot of damage to Nail's main base, and Nail not set up, has not some stuff to deal with it at that time, but he could easily chronoport back stuff to deal with that. He is aware of this, that was Nail's timeline we were looking at, and Nail has in fact sent back a Zion Veer to, to destroy the Octo! So only losing one RP in the process, that will not be a big loss for Nail. Ferreter not able to deal as much damage as he sure would have liked to have dealt. But at this point, dealing any sort of permanent damage is going to be a feat in and of itself. Both players having chronoporting, meaning that the the immutable past edge is going to be the only arbiter of what is reality, ultimately. The unplayable past is now merely a convention rather than a hard and fast rule, though it does still prevent any direct orders, it does mean that both players are going to be much better equipped to defend their bases, and so we'll be seeing a lot of Plasma Cruise Missile. Now we're not going to be seeing a lot of Plasma Cruise Missiles, though that was pretty cool. It's not, what I meant to say was going to be a lot of chronoporting that will cause a lot of defense of everything going on, so there's not going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be permanent. Ferreter Continue to try to keep this chronoport going, dealing a lot of damage with it, and it looks like ultimately he will be able to deal enough damage to get rid of two of the RPs. And let's see, one of the well, the Ox is almost dead, so once the sign beer chronoport's back, it's supposed to appear right about here, right about now, actually. But it looks like no, it does not. It's actually going to be not appearing at all. So somehow Nail forgot he messed up one of his chronoports or got itself undermined, and he's actually losing quite a few RPs in his main base. And of course this expansion with the Farbot still there is going to be very difficult to deal with. Ferritor back in the Unplayable Past, double checking this Octo, which is dealing a lot of damage, but finally getting destroyed by the infantry being chronoported back to deal with it. So ultimately Nail will have four RPs in LC in his main base. And getting a foundation on the northwest side of the map, Ferritor's main base, he has a far Oligo, and he has not much else going on. His expansion is the main battleground right now, but that's the 21 minute mark at the 20... Sorry, just say that is at the 22 minute mark. 21, 20 mark. This is still the main battleground, though we will see earlier on more damage is being dealt, more actually changes to the timeline are being are occurring in the past. And Ferritor has actually chronoported back some units, having chronoported back. Unfortunately, I wasn't there to see what was happening, and it looks like. Shoot, I was holding on to the minimap when that happened. Probably these two fire pods, though. Probably being chronoported back and sent to undermine Nail's main base completely. And. No, that was Nail chronoporting, my mistake. So, Nail will... Wow, what, whatever did he chronoport? Probably the Zion Halcyon, that's probably what it was. The forces that were over here are likely to be 
back in the unplayable past right now, which I realize as a phrase is totally meaningless because we are dealing with a totally different point in time. So now, by now I mean meta now, I suppose. Now in real time. Now based on the time in the present, a chronal now. Yes, we, we as a community we've had this problem ever since the game was announced, so we really haven't been good at coming up with a good vocabulary for this. However, these four pods are being chronoport back to deal with the annex back in the unplayable past, while Nail is being chrono bombed from the looks of it. Is it even fair to point of view? Where's that chrono bomb hit? Looks like the chrono bomb hit right here. So pushing away these forces and so that's explains what happened to them, which means that Nail's only real chronoports have been these infantry and of course this chrono bomb that hit. No, never mind, he did actually chronoport back the forces that I thought he chronoported back. So he has two more Shinturchers and a Tesserchur back in the available pass from the 22 minute mark that are dealing quite a bit of damage here, while the chrono bomb units are being, are basically coming back into existence, but they are being destroyed in the meantime, having been essentially ambushed by Ferritor, which is what chrono bombs are for, really, is setting up these sort of ambushes. Well, yes, you basically set it up so that the units are trapped such that they cannot avoid being killed. That or divide and conquer strategies. Both of them are very effective. Nail, on the other hand, has not actually surprisingly researched any more tech. Probably very focused on getting units for gate tech and chronoports. While Ferritor, having expanded to three bases, his main base only just getting dried out, he's... Okay, maybe not just, but still, only within the last five minutes getting dried out. Three Faro Legos, he's setting himself up quite nicely. If he has specials, he could get himself Freeze Bomb and then basically win from there. But right now, it's a bit of a battle of attrition, at least the way the players are playing it out. Ferritor, however, will be winning such a battle. He does have enough resources to deal with it. Nail, on the other hand, very focused on the unplayable pass, and it looks like more infantry being built up. He seems very keen on going for infantry to vehicles rather than being building vehicles directly from the depot. And Ferritor setting off a plasma cruise missile. So we'll be hitting right about here, right at the edge of the unplayable pass, right at the... Roughly the 24 minute mark, it always comes back. That's the way plastic cruise missiles work. They come back about 10 seconds down from when they left. And there's a plastic cruise missile departure, but we don't see the arrival yet. The red time wave will be bringing it up. And Nail, on the other hand, getting himself ready for a chronoport. But it looks like he's only going to be chronoporting this year. And he has actually managed to. Using his chronoporting, destroy Ferritor's base in the northwest. Unfortunately, now the player was looking at that very much. Ferritor now is, and here we see that Nail, ultimately, with mostly Arianus being that the main defense forces were Octos and Octopods, was able to get rid of Ferritor's northwest expansion. So now Ferritor on the, uh, not really in the back, but he's still ahead in terms of resources, because Nail's main base has also dried out, and Nail only re just starting to rebuild the expansion. But here we go, Ferritor coming with Faro Legos to deal with this assault. Trying to, well, not really save this, but he will at least be able to save the defense forces, and that should be something to, do, to rebuild with. That's less resources being lost. However, these Far Leagues, unfortunately, not being properly ordered to help defend, not completely ordered to get in here, so they will, be able, they will get rid of any units that come at them. But, unfortunately, they aren't taking care of the forces that Nail had sent back. So Nail winning that battle, ultimately, and double-checking that he has, in fact, won. And Ferritor, like I said, these... Forces are just out of the way enough. However, Ferritor will probably be sending back more Far Legos. He's building more Far Legos now, but he's probably going to be sending them back almost immediately just to try to supplement the Far Legos he had sent back. Not enough to save this base, but at least it's enough to deal with the forces that had been used to destroy that base. However, a direct assault probably would just be able to take care of this already, except. The only thing is the Slipgates. Octoligos will be able to deal with them no problem. They have enough attack range. They'd be able to just beat the Slip Repel range without issue. The Far Legos, in the, on the other hand, I don't believe have the attack range required to deal with this. It's hard to tell just based on sight range, but I think they don't. I think their attack range is about 15 or 16, and the Slipgate Repel range is somewhere around 20, I believe, offhand. I don't remember the numbers offhand, and they are going to change quite a lot next version. As I mentioned, the pathfinding update, the pathfinding upgrade also improves the potential for unit vision. So all unit vision will be increased. And here's that plasma cruise missile I mentioned. Where is that going? Destroying the, well, trying to destroy the annex, getting rid of the units that were near the annex and 
Almost getting rid of both foundations, but unfortunately only killing one, so the Annex ultimately will not take all that much damage. Ferreter is now going to have to deal with some Shin... Well, okay. So, Nail getting Shin Halcyons. I have not seen these in a very long time. Used to be... Back to your players. By the way, the Annex here getting destroyed quite handily by Ferreter, though Nail could send back some units to deal with it. But anyway, Shin Halcyons. Rarely seen unit. They used to be very popular back in Alpha and Beta days, but due to their cost and the fact that really kind of for their cost, they aren't the most effective units. They're fairly powerful, but they're not the most cost effective. That's 11 damage per second there compared to... Like, they have about as much anti-air power as Faraligos do, and only a bit more health. And remember, Faraligos are bombers, not, not interceptors, so that's saying a fair amount. However, one big thing they do have is Nanite Infect, which Nail is not using. Nanite Infect, which I don't think has ever really popped up on cast, or at least hasn't popped up in the last year or so, is a power that allows you to essentially take control of an opponent's unit. Not quite like the Dark Archon in StarCraft, because you don't take ownership of the unit, you merely take control of it. Your opponent still owns the unit and can still command it, but you can also provide it commands. Anyway, this expansion being completely destroyed, so Nail is... Nail is on a very tight position right now. He has no resources coming in. He has his slipgate. He has a lot of infantry that are set up very likely to turn into vehicles, but he hasn't actually done so yet. Otherwise, looks like he's probably set up for a reaction force, though I'm not entirely sure why, because you can't switch the archetype, the anti-air, anti-ground, or anything like that. You can't switch that from the infantry level. The infantry determines whether it's anti-ground or anti-air, or in the case of Shin, just primarily aerospace. So I'm not sure why he has all of these infantry set up, but he could quickly spawn them into vehicles, or pilot them into vehicles, just put them into vehicles to pilot vehicles. That would be handy to do right about now, and then chronoport them back, and then use them to deal with stuff in the unplayable past. Because this mass of Far Leagues and Farapod is not going to be easy to deal with without, you know, the proper units, or any units at all to deal with them. So Nail right now looks like he's trying to take care of Farad's expansion, but really... It's just a matter of Ferritor attacking. If Once Ferritor attacks, he's won. And the longer he takes, the easier it is for Nail to get back in the game. Oh, and it looks like Nail is pointing out that the replay playback may not be correct at this point, that essentially Ferritor has should have attacked by now, and apparently the Shin Halcyon was never acquired. Great. You know, I was kind of missing Shin Halcyons, honestly. I, I mean, not as much as I miss Shin Pulsers, but... It's just... You never see them much. I mean, you never see Shin Pulsers either, but you used to see Shin Halcyons a lot, so there's, there's something to miss there. The Shin Pulsers, you don't see Shin Pulsers ever, you just you just don't. So, I'm a little bit sad that this Shin Halcyon is apparently not actually intentional. And also, of course, annoyed that the replay playback is problematic, but that's still better than it used to be, that's for sure. So, Ferreter, basically, from the looks of it, it's just a matter of when he decides to attack, or when it's it's decided when it plays back that he attacked, the time that he attacked. But it looks like Nail is not going to be dealing all that much damage to him, so... Okay, Nail pointing out this replay happened a while ago, so he may not actually know what happened exactly. However, it does look like Ferreter should have attacked by now. I mean, Ferreter might be a little bit timid about attacking, and the slipgates on repel mode are a bit annoying, though this is where chrono bombs would come in very handy. And also where having two slipgates is handy, because it means that repel happens on all sides of the base, so it's very hard to find an angle to attack from. I mean, really, the idea of one slipgate per base is not necessarily a best hard and fast rule. There are good reasons not to do that. Anyhow, it looks like not much is happening. I'm just going to fast forward this a bit. Because I do believe the replay has been messed up a bit, and not much is going on right now. So, just wait until... No, okay, Nail, realizing there's no way to win, because he's basically out of resources. Well, mostly out of resources. He was still getting some. Size of Surrender, middle expansion being destroyed, and that is the game. So, very interesting to see how these two players play against each other. Very entertaining game, apart from the ending where it sort of petered out. But... Still, that was cool. I haven't seen that much chronoporting. I haven't seen Shin Halcyons in a while. I haven't seen 
lots of things that went on in this game. For our Legos, actually I have seen quite a few of those recently. They came up a lot in the Christmas tournament. But other than that, there's a Slipper Pell. So yeah, there we go. Now Ferret is trying to attack and finding Slipper Pell to be a bit of a problem. I expect Corona Bombs will be coming up, but I don't know. I think Nails is going to surrender, honestly. So this is pretty much the game. Ferreter is... Well, he's dealing some damage. He actually found a point in the middle where he's not getting slip he's not getting repelled. And able to get rid of that depot, which is the most important thing to get rid of. If that's gone, Nail has no way of rebuilding forces. Or fixing forces or getting his infantry into vehicles or anything like that. That depot is huge. So looks like the Far Ligo will win that out. And Oh. Nope, that was Plasma Cruise Missiles. That was not anything else. That was just Plasma Cruise Missiles coming in and dealing with the base. Works too, I suppose. Though, Slip Propel... Let's see, where is it? So, let's see. That far, that Plasma Cruise Missile will be coming back, dealing a lot of damage. And this is... And once that happens, we'll see just the end of the game, really. Ferreter has won this. I'm a little bit surprised Nail has not surrendered at this point. And there goes Chrono Bomb. So Chrono Bombing everything but the Slipgate. Oh man, that's gotta be painful. Because that Slipgate, unless he has a far, the Far Pod going in Cloak mode, this is one way. Cloak, Tia, Temporal Solit, Temporal Solit and Shield. I keep calling it Solution Shield. I keep wanting to call it Solution Shield because it's kind of what it is, but. Temporal Solit, Solit and Shield, Cloak, and having recently Chrono Ported are the only ways to avoid Slipgate Repel. It cannot teleport anything that has recent. Uh, that cannot be teleported, essentially. And cloaked units. But that's it. That is the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm going to be... I mean, apart from that, at the end is a little bit random. But I'm just going to be doing one more cast tonight. And then that will be it. So stay tuned. I will be back momentarily.